Hello my friends, in a new video that you may not have heard about before. What do you do when your enemy has the audacity to die before you can properly humiliate him or impose appropriate punishment on him? Well, you shouldn't let mere death stand in the way of revenge. Here are the top 10 horrific posthumous punishments. 10. Gil Van Leidenberg's coffin was hung. And throw him in a hole. The Netherlands fought an 80-year conflict, 1568-1648, with Spain, which was intervened by the Twelve Years' Truce, 1609-21. After the decades-long conflict ended, the Dutch immediately became embroiled in a petty theological dispute among themselves. They disagreed about predestination and the exact time at which God decides whether a soul will enter heaven. There were also political concerns about the resumption of war, and tensions increased between the central government and the provinces. In the 1610s, the situation began to spiral out of control when the more moderate party fell from power in the face of pressure from the more stringent anti-protesters and Prince Maurice, the commander of the army. Gillis van Leidenberg is one of the arrested protest leaders. He committed suicide in September 1618 but was sentenced to death the following May. The coffin containing his mummified body was thus hung on the gallows for three weeks before his burial. However, on the night she was buried, a mob dug up Van Leidenberg's remains and threw them into a ditch. 9. Jacopo Bonfadio was beheaded. And burn it. Jacopo Bunfidio was an Italian humanist known for his poetry, landscape talks, and philosophy. He also wrote a history of Genoa in which he blamed many of the city's leading families by revealing the truth about their past misdeeds. This was a bad idea because he was living in Genoa at the time. These powerful families took advantage of a rumor that Bonfadio had seduced one of his students. As a result, he was sentenced to death for the crime of sodomy. This ruling caused a great scandal, and many intellectuals throughout Italy rose to his rescue. They were unsuccessful, but Bonfadio obtained relative mercy by beheading him before burning him. In a letter supposedly written before his death, Bonfidio showed remarkable calm because all will be consumed by time, and those who condemn him will also one day die. His death was so well known that it was used to rebuke the Genoese government more than two centuries later when it lost. Bonfadio Trial Files 8. Cunemon Jeweled Skull Cup In-laws can be a pain, that's the trope anyway. But you should not kill your husband's father and turn his skull into a drinking cup, because that will lead to marital discord. Alboin, the sixth-century king of the Lombards, learned this the hard way. He had a long-standing enmity with the Jepids, partly due to his murder of the Jepid prince Thorismund in his youth. In 567, Alboin defeated the Jepids in battle and killed their king Cunemund, possible brother of Thorismund. The victory was decisive, as the Jepids were virtually no more, and Alboin helped himself to two prizes. The first was his rival's skull, which was shaped into a gold-plated and jeweled chalice. The second was Cunemund's daughter, Rosamund, whom Alboin took as his wife. Alboin subsequently led the Lombards in their successful invasion of Italy. To celebrate these accomplishments, he held a banquet in Verona in 572, where he made his wife drink from her father's skull. As a result, Rosamund killed her husband. She either carried out the deed herself while he was in a drunken stupor or she seduced and blackmailed one of the king's servants. 7. Garcia Jack. He was crushed by cars and burned. Garcia Jacques was commander of the palace guard for both Francois, Papa Doc, and Jean-Claude, Baby Doc, de Valier, dictators in Haiti from 1957 to 1986. We previously recounted the horrific display of Papa Doc's rule, which included killing all the black dogs in the country, because the enemy had transformed himself into a black dog and replaced God's name with his own in the Lord's Prayer. He also engaged in the practice of sorcery, examining goat entrails and interrogating severed heads, 
and had his secret police kill as many as 60,000 Haitians. Papa Doc died in 1971. In 1986, a popular uprising and diplomatic pressure forced his son, Baby Doc, to flee the country. He flew on a plane filled with jewelry, Louis Vuitton luggage, and designer artwork. He then proceeded to live off Swiss bank accounts filled with hundreds of millions of dollars looted from the Haitian people. Back in Haiti, mobs stormed Papa Doc's crypt, but his remains were supposedly flown out of the country. Consequently, they turned over the grave of his comrades like Garcia Jack. After crowds dragged Jack's badly decomposed body onto the road so that passing trucks could run it over, the body was set on fire. 6. Harold is barefoot. He sleeps with fish. From 1035 to 1040, the King of England was unfortunately named Harold Harefoot, son of Canute the Great, who ruled the North Sea Empire of England, Norway, and Denmark. Harold only came to the throne by exploiting the absence of his half-brother Harthignat in Denmark. Harthignat saw this as an act of usurpation. His anger grew when Harold captured Harold's half-brother, and half-brother, Alfred Athling, blinded him, and then killed him in 1036. After Harold's death in 1040, Harold ascended the English throne. He dragged Harold's body from its monastic grave and threw it into the surrounding swamp. Thus, Harold was equated with a common criminal and denied burial in hallowed ground. Ironically, this backfired on Harthignat. The desecration of his half-brother's grave was seen as a petty act of revenge embodying Harthignat's bad ownership. It is assumed that some fishermen recovered Harold's body and buried them in St. Clement Danes, which may be why the church was given that name. 5. Burning of Lava Karnilov in a garbage dump. Lavra Karnilov was a career army officer in Russia. Born in 1870, he served as an intelligence officer in Central Asia before fighting with distinction in the Russo-Japanese War of 1904-05. At the outbreak of World War I, Karnilov was a division commander. He rose to fame after he was captured by the Austrians and escaped, traveling through Romania to return to Russian territory. Subsequently, he was appointed commander-in-chief of the Russian army by the moderate government of Alexander Kerensky, which seized power after the Tsar was deposed in March 1917. However, the war was unending. It was still going poorly, and the citizens of the capital, Petrograd, were worried. Thus, Karnilov sent troops in the direction of Petrograd to suppress leftist dissidents. There is some disagreement as to whether Karnilov acted unilaterally or had assistance from Kerensky. However, Karnilov went further when he demanded the resignation of the government and the imposition of military rule. Karnilov was accused of plotting a coup, and was imprisoned. After the Bolshevik Revolution, Karnilov escaped and joined the white forces in the Don region. During the winter, he led them on an epic ice march across the harsh steppe. He died when a shell hit his command headquarters during the siege of Yekaterinodar in April 1918. The white forces retreated. Meanwhile, Karnilov's body was exhumed, dragged to the main square, thrown into a garbage dump, and burned. 4. Simon de Montfort Dismemberment, castration, and more. Simon de Montfort was initially a favorite of King Henry III, with the Earl of Leicester Wade granting him marriage to his sister, Princess Eleanor. However, Montfort's relationship with the king gradually became strained. Eventually, Montfort became the leader of the baronial opposition that dominated the king and significantly reduced royal power from 1258 to 1260. But this baronial alliance collapsed, and Montfort was forced to leave the country in 1261. He returned again he returned to England in 1264, captured the king, and ruled as a tyrant for one year. Unfortunately for Montfort, Prince Edward, Henry's heir and future king, fled, raised an army, and defeated Montfort at Evesham. Although Montfort died in battle, 
the jubilant royal forces did not allow him to rest in peace. First, they cut off his hands, legs and head. His testicles were then removed and hung on either side of his nose before being pushed down his throat. Finally, Montfort's head was paraded across the countryside before steadfast loyalist Roger Mortimer sent it to his wife Maud, who had aided Prince Edward in his escape. Not surprisingly, this left some bad blood between families. Montfort's surviving sons saw their chance for revenge in 1271. When Henry III's nephew, Henry of Almon, was in Italy on a diplomatic mission, the Montforts murdered him while he was listening to Mass. Then they mutilated his body. 3. Exhumation and Cremation of Bucer and Fagios Martin Bucer was a Protestant reformer who spent most of his life on the continent, especially in the Holy Roman Empire. There, he fraternized with the famous humanist Erasmus as well as Martin Luther. Bucer also tried to address the differences arising in the Reformation and encouraged a path of pragmatism and compromise. From 1524 to 1548, Bucer attended almost all the major religious meetings in Germany. Unfortunately, political developments forced him into exile to England in 1549, where he was asked to revise Edward V.I.'s first prayer book. Bucer died in 1551, but much of his advice was incorporated into the second prayer book. The young Edward VI died shortly afterwards in 1553 and was succeeded by his famous Catholic sister Mary. She was determined to reimpose Catholicism on England. Although it attempted to do so by peaceful means, about 300 Protestants were eventually burned at the stake. Thus she earned the nickname, Bloody Mary, posthumously. However, not all of the Protestants who were roasted were alive. In 1557, Bucer and his friend Paul Fagus were exhumed and put on trial. Their bones were then bound and burned in a Cambridge market when rural peasants were in town to sell their produce. The burning was accompanied by speeches denouncing them. Their books and writings were also thrown into the fire. Unfortunately for Mary, this did not have the desired effect. The peasants were more confused than anything else, especially regarding the chained bones, and many were unconvinced that punishment was necessary. Mary died the following year, and her Protestant sister Elizabeth rehabilitated the Protestants. Presumably Elizabeth reburied them as well, but it is unclear what remained for them to be reburied. 2. Rasputin. Zombie Fire. Grigory Rasputin's career was extraordinary. He was a Russian mystic who became a favorite of the Russian imperial family due to his ability to improve the condition of the hemophiliac Tsarevich Alexei. Rasputin was known to engage in debauchery and was eventually assassinated. He is known to have survived poisoning, shooting, strangulation and bludgeoning. Instead, he died by drowning. According to modern theories, the British Secret Service was somehow involved in his death. After the Tsar was deposed in March 1917, mutinous soldiers broke into Rasputin's tomb, defaced the wall, and urinated on the site. They dug and opened the coffin in hopes of finding jewelry, but were greeted by a stinking, rotting corpse with a black face instead. Rasputin was secretly reburied. But eventually, his body was exhumed again and sent to a third burial site, allegedly in a piano case. However, the car carrying Rasputin's body broke down, so his body was placed in a nearby field, doused with gasoline, and burned. After that, as if his death wasn't strange enough, Rasputin's burned and rotting body was supposedly sat down. The heat supposedly caused his tendons to contract, giving his body the appearance of movement. If you're wondering how Rasputin's giant pickled penis played into all these adventures, this accessory was removed during the assassination. 1. False Dimitri. I burned it and fired it from a cannon. Ivan the Terrible killed his eldest son and heir in a fit of rage. When Ivan died, this meant that his successors were the mentally disabled Fyodor and the infant Dmitri. Boris Godunov, 
the regent and Fyodor's son-in-law, immediately banished Dmitri. The boy was then killed. When Fyodor died, Boris ascended to the throne. But he was opposed by someone claiming to be the murdered Dmitri, who began fighting his way towards Moscow. Boris died of illness in 1605, and Dmitri became Tsar of Russia after Boris's young son was killed. However, Dmitri alienated his supporters through his close association with Poles and his marriage to Polish Catholic noblewoman Marina Nishek. When a mob stormed the Kremlin, Dmitri tried to escape by jumping out of a window. But he broke his leg and was shot dead as he limped away. After ropes were tied around his feet and genitals, he was dragged through the streets and hung in Red Square to be subjected to scorn and ridicule. Finally, his remains were cremated and the ashes mixed with gunpowder before being fired from the cannon. Then another Dmitri appeared, claiming to have survived the coup. Marina miraculously recognized him. The couple had a child named Ivan, nicknamed the Bandit Kid. After false Dmitri too died in a drunken fight, Marina starved to death while the four-year-old was hanged. Before we finish, Leave us your comment on these stories and what is the most horrific in your opinion. Don't forget to subscribe and activate the bell to receive our new video. Support us with a like and a share to encourage us. See you in another new video.